The S&P 500 is an index fund that tracks the performance of 500 large US companies. This investment provides an annual average return of 10%, which I agree doesn't sound like a lot, especially if you don't earn a lot of money or have much money to invest. If you were to invest 100 euro, in year one you would make 10 euro, and then in year two you would make 11 euro. So now you're up to 21 euros in profit. And after 20 years, you would have 572 euros in profit from just buying 100 euro in S&P ETFs. You haven't earned a lot of money, but you have earned some money from essentially zero effort. All you had to do was put 100 euro into a stock exchange and then purchase an ETF. This 100 euro would turn into 4,500 euro after 40 years. Considering that your money is losing value each year due to inflation, you end up with less money by just leaving it in the bank instead of putting it into an S&P 500 fund, which takes essentially no effort. I know this isn't really a get rich quick scheme. It does take a lot of time or a lot of money to build enough money to retire on, but this is so much less effort than what it would take to do to earn money from working a job. It's truly a passive income. By just deciding to put 500 euro per month for 40 years into the S&P 500, you would have 2.7 million euros, assuming an annual average return of 10%. I'm not trying to scare you into buying stocks or anything. I just want to point out the reason I think it makes so much sense. Another big benefit of the S&P 500 is the fact that in order to make reasonable money from your investments, you have to hold your investment for upwards of 20 years. So you have to decide whether a company that is doing well now will also be doing better in 20 years time. This takes a lot of time and effort to research different companies to decide whether or not you believe they're worth investing in. And you also have to understand what makes a company last a long time, which is very difficult to do. Then instead of doing all this research and spending all this time reading about companies, many people opt to just take lower returns than possible with individual stocks and choose to take a more secure and well diversified approach by buying a small percentage of 500 of the largest US companies. This way you get exposure to all sectors of the US economy and you don't have to worry about individual companies going to zero. Also, many S&P 500 ETFs have incredibly low expenses. Some charge just 0.03%, which means that for every 1 million euro invested, you charge a fee of just 300. So this is a very negligible amount. Along with a consistent annual average return of almost 12% since it was created in the 1920s, you can see why for most people it makes sense to buy this without having to spend too much time worrying or thinking about their investments, while their money quietly sits in the background, creating its own income. Let's not forget that with any investment, there comes risk. And there's always that possibility that your investment can go to zero. So of course, you never want to invest anything you cannot do without. And make sure you understand the risks involved in any investment you take on. There's always the chance that the future performance does not match up to the past performance, or that the exchange you use to purchase these stocks goes under. There's no guarantees, so make sure to do your research on what you buy, and make sure you buy from a good exchange that is FDIC insured. Another issue with buying ETFs like the S&P 500 is that they can be taxed very harshly. In Ireland, you have to pay a tax on ETFs known as deemed disposal, which is where every eight years on the anniversary of the purchase of this ETF, you have to pay 41% tax on the increase in price of the ETF and any dividends you've earned from this investment. You also have to pay this 41% tax whenever you sell the ETF. It's 41% compared to the normal 33% for capital gains. With ETFs, you get taxed 41%, plus there's no tax relief for the first 1,270 worth of your profit. And you cannot set losses of any ETFs against the profits of any other asset. Whereas you can do this all with individual stocks because they're taxed at 33% the normal capital gains tax and you get the 1270 euro per year tax break since it was created in the 1920s the s p 500 has returned 2702 percent apple was created in the 1970s and it has returned 77565 percent so there is a far better return with individual stock picks when you get it right but it's also so hard to be sure which companies will thrive and which ones will die and who is to say that the u.s stock market will always continue to grow at a rate of about 12 percent forever so as you can see the S&P 500 is still a great investment for most investors looking to protect their money from inflation and to retire comfortably, but it's important to be aware of the downsides of this type of investment as well.